you know, um, Mark Twain once said the two most important days in a person's life are the day they were born and the day they figured out why. And um, I had not figured out why I was born yet. And I used to tell that quote to my students all the time, and I know I State had... Senator Steve Swadzinski has written and published a new book. It's called Beyond the Lesson Plan. <laughs> um, what? Yes, do you have any questions? Now, Steve taught American history and government at Eden Prairie High School for 33 years. Beyond the Lesson Plan has 33 chapters. 33 chapters, um, one for each um, year I taught. And the whole theme of the book is all the things I tried to do that weren't curriculum related. And some people, some of my students um, probably would say, um, when did you ever even teach curriculum? Because so much of my lesson was centered around the non-curriculum things, lessons I learned. You know, when I told my every um, year, um, I would tell the story of my of my car accident and my journey in um, that, um, that, that um, accident um, took me on. That accident happened in Superior, Wisconsin, just a short time before Steve's high school graduation. He was driving too fast. He lost control, crashed into a tree. A week later, he awoke from a coma. He had nearly lost his life. It could have went the other way. I, I could have lost the use of my leg, or I could have lost the use of my eye, and I didn't. And He writes about this in the first chapter of Beyond the Lesson Plan. And I told the story in class, like I said, but this time I had to put it in print. And, uh, Although his first book can be purchased online, Steve's got boxes of paperbacks at home. I bought 200 copies. Um, thinking we would have book signings and book showings and here I am um, all these months later with uh, three and a half boxes filled with that. I In chapter one he describes he and his pals as knuckleheads and, and doorknobs. I, I was a, a kid that wanted to uh, I was. Well, I thought I wanted to be the class clown and and bring joy and happiness to everywhere I go. And I began a period of experimentation that lasted through high school, distancing myself from family and becoming close to kids who were a lot more fun to be with and took more risks. My friends and I were acting like a bunch of knuckleheads and doorknobs, obsessed with tomfoolery and hijinks. I was that kid who worked at Sammy's Pizza until 2 o'clock in the morning on school nights, which meant I was seldom ready to learn at 8 the next morning. I was losing interest in my studies. I took classes like human math, as opposed to non-human math, wood shop, power mechanics, boys' foods, and electricity. Not exactly a challenging class load. My friends and I were biding our time until, well, whatever came next. I was, um fun-filled spirit uh, back in the early 70s, mid-70s, and loved every minute of it, And but it was not a, a future with any destiny. And Steve writes that he had no vision, no plan, no future. All he had was a family that cared about him, which came to include the man who married his mom and became Steve's stepdad. Plastic surgery, knee repair, recovery, and a lot of physical therapy became Steve Swadzinski's life turning point. Now and then a kid would come up after class and thank me for telling that story because they had a similar story or one of their parents had a similar story or, or their mom was recovering from breast cancer or their dad from a stroke and so they really truly thanked me for taking time out of their, um, out, of, out of the lesson, so to speak, to talk about that thing that wasn't in the lesson plan. I asked Steve, what else wasn't in that lesson plan? Um, yeah, the, some of the chapters, they're all really interesting, I think. Um, I'll just read off a few of the chapters on what will be your, well, okay. What will be your life's defining quest? Have your misfortunes added fortune to your life? Are you having the best day ever? What do you bring to the buffet? Do you focus on people's strengths? Um, how much would you be worth if you lost all of your money? All of these chapters, like the how much would you be worth if you lost all of your money? I was talking about the, um, 
what was I talking about once? Oh, I was showing pictures of the, of the Great Depression and all these impoverished, sad souls, um, uh, migrant mother, and the famous photograph of the, of the soup line. And, and so finally, one year, this kid raised their, his hand and said, no, those people must have been so miserable. And I paused and I thought about people like my mother-in-law who would have said something like, you know, those were the best days of our lives. And so I came up with that. Um, I used to end that lesson and my Holocaust lesson with, that, with the phrase, how much would you be worth if you lost all of your money? And I, I, I thought that would give people pause to reflect on, on these horrible events in history that are supposed to be, you know, bum us out and be a buzzkill. That what, why teach that? And maybe the real lesson is to, to make you realize um, there's more to our existence than mere wealth, um, or monetary wealth, I should say. There's a chapter in my book, um, Albert Einstein once said that the meaning of life is to solve as much of the puzzle as possible before you die. And I, I, I think that's a message I tried to instill in my students all those years is, is how much of the puzzle have you solved so far? And how much History you itself is pivoted for the good with great puzzle solvers. And they're from all walks of life, religions, races, ethnicities, and genders. Some are even politicians. When a, when, a, when a population focuses on people's weaknesses, it brings us all down. And if we tend to focus on people's strengths, that they were dreamers and explorers, and focus on what they did, and not to be dismissive of their weaknesses, but to focus on their strengths rather than the weaknesses, I think it elevates us all. SWAD students got it in class and beyond the lesson plan, and on trips to Europe and Washington, D.C. I took students to Washington, D.C. for 20 years, uh, loved every minute of it, um, and we would just go at it. And it was um, probably one of my fondest memories outside of the classroom. The trip to D.C. became a badge of honor for some because we'd walked 64 miles in four days. And um, if you could keep up with SWAD on this um, SWAD's march, whatever they called it, it um, you got a, a little badge of honor and kids would come home with blisters and um, um, chafing body parts and... Um, but it was, uh, you know, people would always say, what's your favorite memorial when we're all touring the memorials? And I'd say set and setting. Depends what kind of my mood set is. It depends if the sun is setting. Is it raining out? If it's raining out, the Korean War Memorial in the rain is so strong is just so breathtaking but if it's a sunny bright beautiful day I might pick a different memorial as my favorite memorial if um if I want to get away from the crowd so to speak the Teddy Roosevelt Memorial is my favorite memorial if I'm in a, a reflective mood um I'd Lincoln Memorial is my favorite memorial if I need a little intellectual inspiration the um Einstein Memorial is my favorite memorial so one of the most challenging things in my teaching teaching career was the, the balance of, of teaching history and, and seeing both sides. And um, because for a lot of the historical examples, there, there are two sides to the story and, and many of us only teach one side of the story. And I remember um, when I, first time I read Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee um, about the plight of the, um, the indigenous people and I had only learned the one side of the, of the, of the, of the Native American story and it was was the, the settler side and all of a sudden to be in my early 20s and find out there's another version of the story became a pretty important part of my teaching career. I went to other places as well. We took students to, to study the Holocaust in Eastern Europe. I took people to study the Beatles in Liverpool. So we, um, we did about um, um, I don't know, maybe close to over 30 trips um, to, uh, over the, over the um, latter, um, second, third, um, second half of my teaching career. But one of the, um, you know, and I know every day I'd say, what was the highlight of the day? What was the, the most meaningful experience? And we got on the bus at Auschwitz and I went through the 36 students and each student had to say how they're feeling after visiting Auschwitz. And I'll never forget uh, till the day I die, and I even remember the young woman's name, um, when I asked her what um, her feelings were um, after leaving Auschwitz, she just looked at me and she was crying and she said, I wish my mom was here. And um, I just thought that's the most poignant 
comment I've ever heard a student make um, that they, um, you know, it's like that um, line in, in World War II novels and the, what, what's the most memorable um, crying you heard on the battlefield and it was wounded and dying um, soldiers asking for their mom. Only eight days after Steve had shared thoughts with me about his book and about our national ethos, our federal capital was attacked. January 6 burns like a whiplash to the American soul. Everybody stay down. The insurrection had heated up outside on the Capitol steps, the same steps where Minnesota congressional leaders Jim Ramstead, Paul Wellstone, Eric Paulson, and others had welcomed Eden Prairie students and their teacher. Those hallowed steps and the Capitol itself are now protected by razor wire. Those who really read and, and know history are not surprised, but democracy will survive. You know, people always ask me, what do I miss most about teaching? Or am I, when I'm at the, at the Capitol, um, do I find myself in teacher mode? And, and the world couldn't be any more different. And uh, I just, um, but I do miss teaching. Uh, but I never thought in a million years I'd find something I love more than, than teaching. And I love being at the Capitol um, more than teaching. And I don't have to wait for a bell to ring to go potty anymore. And as I finished writing the book, I realized I think there's a greater audience here. And I, I hope um, some of the parents of my students decide to read it. And I hope people that never even heard of me before. And maybe all you know of me is I'm a state senator representing Eden Prairie and Minnetonka. Um, but nonetheless, I think the book, um, you'll find a, uh, it a joy and a pleasure to experience. And it's a quick read. <laughs>